everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center, and today I wanted to talk about the wind block. You know, you can always make wind blocks out of really anything around your property. You can stack some wood around your rabbitry hutch. You can build a permanent picket fence. You can uh, just use six mil plastic like we do. And I spoke with some people about, um, you know, this heat wave and everything, and, and some of them said they already removed their wind block plastic and you know they think winter's over and you know they may be right but in many cases we'll have these heat waves I mean it was 60 degrees last week but now we're right back down to 35 degrees and we have a lot of winter left so I'd really recommend to folks just hold off a little bit you know some of these wind blocks um, are so necessary uh, especially with Michigan winters we have some pretty brutal winters and a lot of our storms come late in the season February even early March um, you know this time last year we got 12 inches of snow and it, it may seem like winter's over but uh, the wind block is important in general your rabbits are gonna do great in freezing temperatures especially compared to the summertime you know when they're panting and they're dealing with bugs and they're sprawled out against the cage floor bottom winter time is what they they really enjoy but when they're getting continuously pounded with with wind this is when they're vulnerable you know I mean even if you give them some extra food some extra pellet some something to burn some extra calories so they can stay warmer uh, it's not enough. They need that wind block. So as you can see, our plastic is still up because we we have a lot of winter left. So just wanted to recommend that to folks. And you know, you can you can build these wind blocks some bales of hay or some straw. Most of our winds coming from the west, uh, the north. You know, so the rabbits are doing really well here in the winter time, and we're trying to get ahead of things with our beekeeping. You know, a lot of you guys think that um, beekeepers are crazy. <laughs> but uh, we we have two dozen hives on the property for those of you who don't know uh, we love raising rabbits but we also love raising honeybees we raise Italians and then we catch feral hives and if you'd like to see more you can check out our beekeeping channel Bobby's Bees uh, YouTube channel we also have a website if you'd ever want to get on there and purchase some bees you can make a reservation it doesn't cost any money no money down to make a reservation I really recommend even if you're thinking about it Get in there, get in line on the reservation list on bobbiesbees.com because we sell out every year. We don't have enough bees to fill all our orders. So, and all the, the sales start in May and uh, that's pretty much it. We only really sell in May and June and because the bees need enough time to build up over the, the season so they're ready to go into the winter and then they can overwinter. So uh, be sure to, to get in there and put your name in there and I can contact you when the bees are ready. Uh, we sell them for a really good price. In most cases, we're selling them for less than everyone else's. So uh, beekeeping is really enjoyable. You know, I love raising rabbits, but I also, I'm so passionate about raising bees. I, they're, they're so exciting and calming to, to watch, to watch them fly, watch them work your property. And you know, we have a system where we grow food but the bees help with the pollination with our with our orchard with the food that we grow just like the system and the honey that they produce is feeding us and raw honey the be the benefits of raw honey the list is a mile long i mean the, it'll fill out a whole page of all the things that it's beneficial inside the body and out so really recommend having some some hives on the property and because it's going to it's going to make more food it's going to increase your crop and your yield and uh, just can't recommend it enough so if you guys have any questions be sure to contact me at bobby at the and I can I can answer your questions so right now uh, we're actually going to go out and we're going to prep our hives early season you watch your hives and you find out which ones they're called dead outs which one are still living which ones are not and when you find out which hives are not or didn't overwinter didn't make it you can get in there and clean out the hives because why we do that is that the bees are there's a lot of moisture in there and a lot of the, like the dead bees and the pollen this this will mold and you don't want some moldy mess in there once you finally get time and things warm up the heat starts hitting those boxes and all that moisture it just rapidly molds and it ruins all your stuff and you'll have to scrape all that out and dip them in bleach water and it's a it's a big headache so if you get in there and clean them out uh, you you can prevent this problem so if you'd like to see how we do that stick with us we're gonna go down to the apiary and we're gonna clean out some hives and maybe we'll find some some honey frames that the bees didn't eat 
and we're gonna be able to harvest some honey early spring. So here we go. So days like today, the bees won't be flying. You won't be able to come out here and really see which ones are dead, which ones aren't. So when it was warm, when they were flying, because when it starts to warm up, they'll do the cleansing flights. That means they don't use the bathroom in the, the hives. They'll, they'll come out of the hive, then they'll use the, the bathroom, come back. So what I have did is marked all the hives that were not flying, were dead, and so now I can get in there and I don't have to worry about, um, you know, I don't have to worry about bees flying all over me. I know that this hive is dead. So you can start to see that it's starting to mold. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. Want a nice clean box. Okay, maybe I can get this one to pop. And once I get one, once I get one frame out, all of them start to come out a lot easier. So what I do is I just start cleaning them up. I just do a quick, some people call this dress them up real quick. This is a really dark hive. In a lot of, in many cases, you can't really turn this into wax. It doesn't wax right, but you can see how that's molding. That's molding right there. This is a pollen frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna scrape all this off and get, This dark comb doesn't really make very good wax. It basically just sits on the top. And in my experience, you're better off just cleaning them up and now they're not gonna mold on you. Okay, so I can see we already got a moldy frame here. Same thing, moldy. See that mold coming out? And that's where we're getting in here. This is exactly what you'll run into. It has to be cleaned. I'll just go through real quick so you guys don't have to sit there. Now that's a mouse, I got a mouse in here. It ruined this frame. So I think I actually just seen the mouse run off you can see the damage. When you don't put your mouse guards in, you can see the damage a mouse can do. Oh, there goes the mouse. Oh, there they go. They're just running. Oh, there's another mouse. Ugh. There's a whole family in here. So what I'll have to do is they'll have to seal this up so they don't come back. Because they really will, they'll come right back. See this mouse home? An easy way to keep the mice out, uh, once you get done cleaning them out, just simply turn your bottom board over so there's no entrance. So they won't be able to uh, go in and out. So. This is the kind of comb that's gonna make really good wax if you wanted to clean them off. Save this. But this, this all has to be scraped out because of this moisture from this pollen.
show you. This is, this is what we're looking for. So we go through these hives and we try to find frames that are like this. You know, that's, this is a 10 pound frame. So this is going to be about two and a half quarts of honey. So something we can harvest early season. You know, we're, we're finding these frames like this, which, you know, the, the bees just either starved or didn't have the body heat and they just froze. So, but. <sighs> so dark frames like this, they're great for catching swarms, but they'll hold a lot of disease and all this pollen with this moisture, it's gonna cause mold here as soon as things start to heat up. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of it and the bees can make fresh comb. It's very sticky. One more thing I wanted to mention before we wrap this video up. Uh, I made my way around the apiary uh, yesterday and this was the last hive that I got into. I mark these with a brick up like that when there's a dead out and you come out here on the warm days and you kind of mark them all and you know the bees are flying. Well, it was around 50 degrees. I was pretty sure this was a dead out, but it actually wasn't warm enough to have all the colonies. Probably some of the smaller colonies are, are clustering. And uh, when I got into this the other day, you would have seen me run like a scared little girl. I wish I had the camera going because it was pretty funny. I was getting in there to start cleaning it out and all the bees came out and there was a cloud of them. So I carefully put, put it back together and got out of here. Luckily that was the last one. But that's why it's really important to get out here and, and first mark your hives and second introduce some food. Right now February, March, you know there's not there's no pollen or nectar. You can't feed sugar water either because they're not going to drink it and start turning it into honey unless it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. So introduce some sugar, some sugar patties, some fondant. You know, any of these will, will do. Uh, I just like to, to mix up some water and sugar. Uh, you can do five pounds of sugar, two cups of water, throw in a couple tablespoons of white vinegar, and then you put it on uh, a sheet, a baking sheet, put some parchment paper down first, pour the sugar in. It's gonna be kind of like a gravy, but then once you put it in the fridge, it'll solidify just like uh, Jello would. And um, next day, cut them into pieces, bring them out, open up the top, open up the inner cover, and put it on the inside of the inner cover and close everything up. That way, because they've probably made it from the bottom box to the top box, and they're gonna be right there. They don't have to go very far if they need some food. This time of year, they've probably ate a lot of their food. And, you know, sadly, a lot of beekeepers lose their hives in February, March, right when it's so close. For them to be overwintering and I just want you uh, I want you to have bees in the spring I want you to be successful and and right now there's no pollen or nectar and this is what they need so just wanted to share that um, but yeah yeah you'll notice that this doesn't have the marked uh, dead out brick uh, because yeah there's there's bees in here so just wanted to share that thank you so much for watching be sure to let me know if there's any uh, questions or if you have any comments please leave them below thanks for taking the time to do that and we'll see you on the next video